and thank you so much for coming to do this interview with us for Neuro Agenda. Um, and just as a recap for those people that are watching this, we are chatting to um, some people, some amazing women who help run and do research and um, do teaching in the Centre for Developmental Neurobiology and the affiliated MRC Centre for Neuro um, Developmental Disorders. <laughs> That's always a mouthful for me. Is it? Um, yeah. <laughs> CND, DD, CDN. Um, yes. So thank you for joining us today, Lauren. And we, I'm just going to ask you some questions um, oh. and um, have a chat, basically. So uh, I was wondering if you could tell us to start with about your position at King's and how you came to be in your position. If okay, all right. That yes, makes... sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm in a bit of a funny position at the moment because um, I'm kind of I'm on a secondment to central uh, central directorate, but I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. My 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 main job at Kings has been um, uh, business manager for the uh, Centre for Developmental Neurobiology. Um, I started in 2008 um, as centre administrator for the. Well, it's all it's uh, all the MRC Centre CNDD, but it's the MRC Centre for Developmental Neurobiology, um, and then we became a department for Developmental Neurobiology, and then we merged with IOPPN, um, and uh, yeah, so I guess uh, the role probably evolved into business manager for Developmental Neurobiology probably about five years ago. Um, there was quite a big shift, and when Oscar Moraine joined as head of department. Um, things kind of went off in a bit of a different direction, I suppose. So, yeah, yeah. that's why that's my that's that that's that job but at the moment. Like I say, I'm on to comment in um, in the research management and innovation directorate for Kings. Mm, so it's, it's sort of it's a broader role over research management for Kings. Okay, and what would you what does your role as business manager involve in the centre when you're doing it? <laughs> uh, everything. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. It's um, it is a bit of everything, actually. It's um, I suppose the absolute kind of uh, I suppose the purpose of the role. I I've always seen the purpose of the role is um, to facilitate the research that goes on. I'm not a scientist. I have no scientific background whatsoever. Mm. Um, but I see it's my job to make sure that. Um, we've got the right administrative administration structures in place in the department to help things run smoothly, that people can hire researchers when they need to, that people can apply for grants, that people can spend their money. Mm. Um, and that I suppose in its most basic sense, so that the researchers can get on with their research and me and the, and the admin team, Stefania and Emma and, 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 um, and others that feed into that, Tamara and Grant, that, and Deborah, that we make that machine run smoothly for them. Yeah, sure. That's, that, that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I mean, personally, from my point of view, I always think of you guys as the kind of glue that makes the research possible, because without you guys, it would be, um, it would be impossible to do yeah. what we're doing, if you like. So um, that's really interesting. So what I think you've always got you've always got to have people who are keen and interested in the detail and that kind of stuff yeah. and it's not everyone's bag but the people that are interested they're the people that you need who are good at good at all the paperwork stuff and getting stuff through and uh, yeah that's us and it's funny as well I always think of you guys as um, kind of uh, as being central to everybody so everyone feeds into you but you almost have sometimes. Uh, a pastoral role you like you you kind of like know you know everyone really well and you you uh look after everyone as well <laughs> you take care yeah. of you know uh, well yeah and that's a really nice element to the role and um you know when you've worked somewhere for that long you do mm. actually I mean gosh I I'm aging myself a bit here but you know you do see when I started I can think of several people who were um, perhaps postdocs who you then go on to see become take PI positions mm. and or people who perhaps when I joined were very junior PI 
physicians who are now professors. Mm. And, you know, you, you, you go, you end up on, um, without realising it really, you do end up on a little bit of a journey with people, which is really nice. And you get to know people really well. And then, yeah, I guess you do end up having that pastoral role because you, you do get to know people really well. But I love that part of the job. Yeah, and you're really good at it. <laughs> well, I like a chat, Lee. That's the thing. <laughs> Main thing. Like, like a chat. chat. We yeah. like a chat, don't we, Loza? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's true. So that that was my next question in a way about what yeah. is it that you most like about your job? Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, like I do. I mean, I love I love working things out for people, solving problems for people. Um, for me, just like having people say that's brilliant. You guys sorted that out for us. That's me. That's me. Sorted. you know I love that um but I also I'm a bit of a geek I do love um the numbers and the spreadsheets and the reporting and the data and you know there's quite a bit of that around it as well so um I do I do enjoy that another element to it actually as well is um the stuff that um I get involved in more sort of divisional level or faculty level there's that element to it as well that interaction with um you know uh, people like Rachel Keane and divisional business managers um that kind of uh, broader picture mm. stuff which is also really, really interesting yeah so, and I, yeah, yeah it's important one. I guess <laughs> to like bring in that overview because sometimes that can really help run a big department mm. Like how to I think particularly with us in Dev Neuro up at Guy, you know, when so many people in IPPN are down at Denmark Hill, you need to somehow bridge that, mm. bridge that gap. Yeah, sure. So what would you say, Lauren, I mean, looking at sort of the last, I don't know, however many years, what would you say, if there has been any, or what has been the most challenging part of your experience, professional experience up till now, would you say? Has there been any? Yeah, um, yeah, but I, for me, it was when I came back from um, maternity leave um, after having had my youngest, Clara, um, uh, I, I, if I'm honest, I'd not really noticed it, but coming back from that leave, so it was my third maternity leave, and I had sort of struggled with it a little bit each time coming back, I think, but I'd kind of just brushed it under the carpet a little bit. But by the third time, there was kind of not really <laughs> much hiding. And I did really struggle with it. A lot of anxiety about coming back to work. I very nearly didn't come back to work. Um, but uh, with, uh, but Oscar was just, was brilliant and gave me so much encouragement and support to come back and think about working in a different way, in a more flexible way. And, um, but, you know, I, I was really pleased to give that a go, but one, once I got over that part and decided to come back, I found that one of the, the big challenges for me was, um, it was still quite novel, like we're looking at about six years ago now, it was still quite, a, to be working from home as much as I was and to have that flexibility, it wasn't really particularly like widespread in professional services, which sounds crazy now, we consider the situation we're in now, but it's the case and you know, I got an, an, an I didn't. I got an awful lot of pushback as from um, some corners. Not in Dev Neuro, absolutely not in Dev Neuro. Like massively supportive, but but sort of you know outside of the department. Um, and yeah, that was a really challenging time for me, kind of um, confidence-wise. Um, feeling like you know, oh, am I am I I'm not here enough and I'm not doing enough and people think that I'm not present enough and this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was a really challenging time, but with the, I have to say what got me through that was the support of Oscar and Dev Nero for sure, mm -hmm. because I always knew that they knew me well enough to know that I was, um, always going to do, always going to do my best for them. So yeah, yeah that's absolutely. a tough time. It's not easy coming back from that leave. No, no, definitely not. And, you know, and also I think as well, Lauren, you've kind of gone on from that to build on what you had before that in, in your professional sense. And, and that's been really, that's, that's pretty amazing to see. And I think, I wonder if maybe quite a few people go through that, but maybe just don't vocalise it um, mm. or reach out, or maybe they just leave 
And that's, you know, yeah. the end of it as a woman coming back from maternity leave and dealing with everything you may have to deal with in terms of yeah. children and balancing. And so that's really interesting. Um, I what, think as well, I, 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 well, I went, um, I, uh, sometime last year, I, I went on a day's kind of workshop or something on um, that the NHS were running about people, a mentoring scheme specifically for people returning to work. Mm. And of, of course, there's a big focus on those people coming back to work from maternity leave because that is a huge section of the workforce, but mm. also people coming back to work um, after periods of illness or having to take time out for any kind of caring responsibility, um, or perhaps they've been made redundant and they haven't been working for a while. And all those um, anxieties that can stop people, like you say, that may, maybe people just leave the workplace, mm. don't want to face it, don't feel that they're going to get supported. And, um, you know, the more we can do, I think, in organisations to, to make people feel supported and to recognise where um, skills are and not, not, you know, have those support uh, mechanisms in place, then, you know, more, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. So I guess, I mean, I guess to sort of finish on, that was my last question really is, what do you think there are any positive actions that could be taken to, um, to I guess, increase female representation at senior levels in science from your perspective and from your experience? Um, and what do you think would be the most um, meaningful thing that could happen in terms of the positive actions? That's a big question, I realise that. <laughs> but. I think there's loads of stuff. I mean, mm. mentoring and coaching, I think, is mm. it can really be quite transformative. You put you, you get out what you put in, but, but I really do think that that is, um, and there's so many schemes and things that sometimes I think it can feel a little bit overwhelming and you don't really know where to start. Um, but I do think there's um, there's a lot of opportunity there. I think in, in, in science, though, something that, um, well, it always has always staggered me how long people go along on fixed term contracts mm. and the instability of that. And um, particularly as people start to get financial commitments, um, mortgages, kids, the lot, then and, and I think it becomes really difficult. And I don't know what the stats are, but there must be it must be quite you know, it really narrows very quickly, doesn't it, as to the permanent positions that you might be able to get. And um, I feel very lucky being able to work for an organisation like King's. A lot of professional services staff in admin roles do have permanent contracts, yet, you know, technical staff, um, postdocs, researchers, they don't, they don't have that. And that's, um, it's got to be, got to be an issue for, for people. Um, so... I know there's always conversations going on around that, but I think that that is something that would, uh, that's um, definitely an area where. Mm -hmm. so yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, Lauren, it's thank you so much for all of your you. insights on things and to hear a little bit about your journey and your job. And it's been a real pleasure to talk to you. So, and you. Thank you so much. I always thank say, you. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Bye.